hydrogen trichloride, so N with three chlorines. So I need 26 valence electrons. You do it so fast. <laughs> that? Yes. Okay. So this is, okay, so it's got one lone pair. I'm trying to remember the shape. Bent has two. Well, this is what geometry? It's trigonal. Now trigonal. Remember the lone pair counts as one. Oh, there's four. So this is a tetrahedral, tetrahedral. with one lone pair. Therefore, mm -hmm. what is the shape? Mm -hmm. I know tetrahedral with zero lone pairs is still tetrahedral. Yes. Pyramidal. Yes. Okay. Mm. Oh, bent is in both. Okay. So, okay, so it's pyramidal. Um, even though there's chlorines all around, there is a lone pair, so it is polar. It is polar. Okay, bipolar. And then bromine. This is kind of like the nitro nitrogen, I guess. So there's two. You're missing one lone pair in each one. Because Br just need one electron, so do we just combine like that? Oh. Oh, I see. That's where you would know if you need a triple bond. Or yes. Not. That's smart. Okay. Instead of a lot of erasing and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's symmetric. It's symmetric, therefore. Uh, therefore, it's. Um, not polar, so it's dispersion. Yes. Yay. Understanding. Done. That. One more. Are you happy for me? <laughs> <laughs> You're it's almost so, done. You're so close. Okay. Um, for each pair of compounds, let's say check the box next to with a higher boiling point. Oh. Okay, for this one's there, everybody will be nonpolar. Everybody. What you're looking for is the one that has the highest molecular weight. Higher molecular weight on mm -hmm. higher boiling point. So it's basically using your periodic table. Oh, okay. You say, I have. I ripped it, I got mad. <laughs> I have this guy, which it is for both here, mm -hmm. and one has hydrogen, and one has iodine. So the one that has iodine has more weight, therefore has you the You just take the difference of these two? No, I just added them up. Oh, you add them up? Yeah, but I know if I have that with hydrogens, hydrogen is one, 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 one. Uh -huh. So it would be like something plus four. And I have this with iodine, which is 60, no, 60, 126. It will be something plus 126, 126, 126, 126. So this is heavier, okay. therefore it has the highest boiling point. Okay. So with boiling points, we deal with, we look at the molar mass. With um, polar bonds, we look at the electron Yes. Well, you need to look at that one also. For boiling point, you also look for electronegativity. But all of this is tetrahedrals and non polars. Okay. All of them. Yeah, because they're all symmetric. Because all they are symmetric. So the only thing that can differentiate the boiling point really is how heavy, heavy they are. Will they always be like this? Or will we have to see? One of the problems will be like that. Mm -hmm. The other one, they throw you something that is not symmetric. Yes. So that if it's heavier, it has a higher boiling point. Yes. Okay. And she was talking about the strongest 
intermolecular force will have the highest boiling point? Yes. And the, the lowest vapor pressure? The thing there is that if I have this guy, this is a dispersion, uh -huh. right? When they start to interact with another molecule of methane, dispersion. If I have this guy, it is dipole. Mm -hmm. And if I have this guy here, hydrogen bond. Because hydrogen bond is stronger, requires more energy to break, therefore the boiling point to be uh, uh, bigger. Because this has the weaker interaction and dispersion, the boiling point is lower. If the boiling point is lower, mm -hmm. the vapor is higher because I have more vapor being formed compared to this guy there. So no matter what, your H bonds are always going to be the highest boiling high, points. Highest boiling and then the dipoles would be the second highest mm -hmm. and then the dispersion. But since we're just doing dispersion. Yeah, but that one's everybody's a dispersion. Then mm -hmm. we need to look the molecular weight. Okay. So then um, silicone and fluorine and silicone and hydrogen. So silicone and fluorine are going to be the higher boiling points. Yes. I like that. <laughs> oh, dang it. They're not all the same anymore. Okay, so I can look at these two differences, though. So it's going to be um, germanium and fluorine is the higher boiling point mm -hmm. on that one. And then iron and arsenic. What's the iron? Oh, we have to learn that one, so I don't really know where it is. So this one, you do you still look at the molecular mm -hmm. mass? Because there are gases. So it's radon, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that looks like a lot of And this one there, it's just a bunch of carbons and hydrogens, mm -hmm. and they are really connected like this bunch of tetrahedrals. So you just need to look to see what one has more carbon and hydrogen. It's still a bunch of dipoles. So this one, you have 6, 79, 10, 12 hydrogen. And this one, you're going to have more. More. Therefore? This one is going to be a higher yes. point. Every time you have carbon and hydrogen by itself, there's always tetrahedral things going on there, and it always lands in a dispersion. Oh, okay. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so now they. Can I still just look at the molecular map? No. Mm -hmm. Because now. They are like this. This two not oh. polars. So um, carbon selenium is has a higher boiling point. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Well, that's easy. 